G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Today I'm with Ollie Knox at the University of New England. And Ollie, you've been soiling your undies. I have, I've been soiling my undies now for five long years. <laughs> Well, I'm but very sorry to hear that. Soiling your undies is a great way to investigate the invisible soil microbiology that's, in, that's down in there in your soil. These are the bugs, the bacteria, the fungi, even the tiny little invertebrates that yep. really are driving all of those incredible cycles we rely on. Nutrient turnover, the breaking down of organic residues or waste products, and basically bringing them back into nutrients and feeding the soil in a way that our plants then capitalize on and we capitalize on those plants. So why aren't they so fantastic? What I love about what you're doing, and you're a really well-respected agronomist. I mean, you do a lot of consultation work to major industries. You're also um, teaching here at the university. You've got a huge background in soils and soil microbiology, but you're keeping it simple. There's so many people running around worried about this type of nematode or that type of bacteria, but you're just looking at this as a whole thing that can be easily managed. That's, that's right, and I think that's important because there is so much diversity under our feet that to try and pick individual components out of it and say how do we tweak this or how do we manipulate it well that that's where science will maybe take us in the future but for yep. now looking at that biology just accepting that it's there yes and then saying all right we know it's there we know we rely on it what can we do just to help it how can we just give it that little boost or encourage it to be maybe more productive or proactive to deliver the functions and the, the things we want out of the soil. So your program is called Soil Your Undies. Tell us in a nutshell what this program entails. It's pretty straightforward, Tim. We, we basically are taking a pair of cotton white underpants Yep. and we're burying them in the soil, five centimeters deep, so only about as deep as your hand or your fingers. Okay. We leave them there for eight weeks and we always do it for eight weeks, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then we dig them back up and when we recover the pants, Fingers crossed, if your biology in the soil is active, if it's healthy, if you call it whatever you want, if it's good, yep. then it will be able to see the cotton fibers that these underpants are made of, and it will break them down. It will basically attack them or de decompose them to get at the sugar that they're made of and the carbon in terms of that. And then you get back pants that look as amazing as, well, you know, in a really good soil. This is what you get back next to nothing. So what we have here is basically the elastic. So eight weeks, and the they've polycons. disappeared. In eight weeks, you're down to just the man-made fibers. The cotton is gone. That's what we want. That's what we're after. And yet we, we see results like this, once again, buried for eight weeks at five yep. centimeters. And when this and kind of- And they're just kind of stained. Yeah, so when this comes back, this tells us that there's a little bit of activity here. I mean, we've got the odd hole, but you're yep. right, the staining is just the start of that cotton breaking down. Yep. So the biology in this system is not as active. Yep. It's maybe not as diverse. Um, and maybe there's something that we can do as land managers or responsible homeowners to actually try and encourage our soil biology to get that diversity going and to get the activity up. And it can be really simple things like this sort of thing can often mean too little or too much water in yes. our soils. Yes. Uh, it may actually be that the pH has become either too acidic or too extremely alkali. Yep. So the biology is struggling to basically So go function. for the basics first. Water, go, pH. Water, pH. Look at then, that stuff. Don't go buying all these elixirs first. No. Start with the simple stuff. And then say, okay, if I've got most of that right, maybe it's the food this biology is getting. And yep. the best way to feed this biology is with some kind of ground cover. Um, yep. So if you can't get plants to grow, could mean the pH is wrong anyway, but get some straw get, even. Just get some straw, get some mulch, get yep. something onto the surface of that soil that will basically start to break down and encourage that biology to become more active. And then think about putting in some plants for the long term. Now, one of my big questions with this project is if you do this at different times of the year, you're going to get vastly different results, aren't you? Or you're going to get different results in a drought, you're going to get different results after a flood. Yep. So you know, you don't do a soil test once, then leave it and walk away and say, well, that was fun. You do soil tests regularly. How regularly should you do this test? And should you do it always at the same time of the year? Is it optimum? I mean, let's drill down on this a little bit more. Well, the first point there, I guess, Tim, is you're right. The, the climate that you find yourself in is going to be hugely influential. So yep. we've had you know, two years of flooding, two years of drought before that. It's, it's never constant. Yep. So there's always going to be that challenge to overcome. Um, trying to find the right time of year. We're talking about a soil microbial population. So the thing that influences them is the temperature. Yes. So ideally in a summer, they will be more active. But if you're in a part of Australia that has nice summer temperatures, but winter dominant rainfall, you'll get good temperatures, but not enough water. So you're never gonna quite get everything exactly the same. Mm. 
And I think it comes back to how interested are you in that soil biology? Do you want to do a winter sample and a summer sample? Or do you just want to say, all right, this is the time of year when my soils are likely to be doing their best thing for me. When does your grass grow? When do your trees producing fruit? What I like people to think about to try and get it again a bit more standardized is to say to themselves, okay, are there some events I can tag this along to? Mm -hmm. And every year on the 7th of October, we celebrate World Cotton Day. And you kind of go, That's your cool. perfect opportunity, isn't it? Great opportunity to go in the ground. You're coming there, you know, you're in, into your, um, your springtime, the ground's warming up. Most of us have still got a bit of moisture around in any, any of our systems, no matter where we are. Yep. 7th of October, World Cotton Day. Why not celebrate that with a pair of cotton pants to investigate Soil your, soil. your undies, folks. Soil your undies on October the 7th. There you go. And celebrate cotton as a magic natural fibre. Now, eight weeks takes you to about, I think, the 3rd of December dig them up because on the 5th of December you can tell the world how amazing your soil is because the 5th of December is World Soils Day. So there's your beautiful eight week period Perfect. to give you a good start reason, a good end reason and to tell the world about how incredible or otherwise in the case of this pair of pants your soil is. And do it every year. And do it every year. Yeah, why not? Especially if you go, oh, you know what? They're We're not as trouble. good as I hope. Yeah. Let's let's take lots of photos and track our progress. And make a change. Yeah. Say what what's going on in my soles that I need to change. And if they look like that incredible pair that we had earlier, you know, if they're coming back like this, what am I doing? Let's keep doing it. That's the Borat of soil your undies. Well, yeah, I reckon you could wear these at Mardi Gras, but you might find yourself <laughs> in trouble with the police. Um, it's but it's yeah, it's a repeat measure. Let's have a look at the landscape now and figure out a plan. Okay. We've got to think about our soil biology as being part of the landscape, don't we? We do indeed, yeah. So if we're looking here, we've got different types of activity. We've got non-use, we've got weeds, we've got driveways and heavy traffic areas, we've got some grazing pastures here, and then we go down the hill into a creek that's on cracking black clay, which is amazing stuff. If I was thinking about sampling this property, how would I think about, should I, should I bury the undies in a transect? Should I bury them near crops, away from trees? Like, there's lots of questions here. They are, they are and they're great questions, Tim. And I suppose for most people, I'd say, what is it you're likely to change? Or where can you most easily change something in your landscape? Now, we're, we're in a very yeah. agricultural setting here. Yes. And I want everybody to soil their undies. So yeah. for some people, it's about a backyard or a veggie bed or somewhere, basically anywhere you can get them down. But some of the things you mentioned there, like the roadway. You're not yes. going to dig a hole in the road. You're never going to change what's happening on that road. So Microbes rule... don't like compaction. No, they don't. So we'll rule that out straight away. Yep. Even here in this landscape, yeah, if, if we wanted to say, well, maybe we're going to do something about weed control and maybe we're worried that the herbicides we're going to use or the mechanical means we might use to destroy those weeds might affect our soil biology. Do I know what it's like now and what it's maybe like next year once I've removed those weeds? That might be a good question, in which case over here where we've got a fair, fair proportion of weeds would be a great place to soil your undies. You might even find, and this is something that really confronts people, but you might even find that soil biology increases where you've used herbicide because of all of the returning nutrients from the plants that you've killed. Indeed. It's often the case. And sometimes you know, it shocks people to think that, but I you can know. actually increase soil biology with, through the use of some herbicides. Yeah, we're putting crop residue back into our soil and actually reducing that load that the, the weeds are pulling out of the soil. So it can yeah. increase your biology for sure. Not that we you know, recommend the, the rampant use of chemicals. We would never do that. No, and weed control can be done in many ways. Yes. Um, another thing about the landscape here, we're in a mid slope. So yep. we said how important water was. So down the bottom, yes. It might well be, should it rain? <laughs> That's always a, a big if, that it might get too wet too often. Yes. It may even be hard to get actually back to get our pants back out if it's in an area that's too wet. Yep. Whereas up the slope, we know it gets rockier. We also know that really rain dry. will tend to run down the hill and that will dry out quicker. So here on the mid slope, it's probably a pretty good area. Um, it's also near a number of landmarks. So actually marking where we put our pants and coming back to them is something we want to think about. You know, how accessible is the place where you're soiling it? How representative of what it is you might manage and you know as we look around here yes there are some improved there are some native pastures we talked about that change you know if if you're just going to look at a native pasture are you actually going to improve it are you going to fertilize it or change your grass sward if not is it economically viable well that too yeah, yeah so yeah. it's all about harboring that biology or trying to get a feeling for how good it is or otherwise um so <laughs> It'd be a really like useful it. tool too for someone who's just bought a property and they're thinking where do i put my little orchard well, put your undies out and the microbes will tell you. Yeah. 
The underpants won't tell you the variety of species, they won't tell you the amount of species that are there, but they will tell you about their activity. And at the end of the day, if we're talking about putting carbon back into the soil, promoting plant growth, it's the activity that matters, isn't it? It is. And th the, the biodegradation, the, the breakdown of the underpants is mostly driven by fungi, yes. but that's okay. But they're part of that wider biological community. If they're diverse to produce all of the enzymes needed to basically unpick that cotton fiber, you know, you think about it, we mm. grew it on a plant, we spun it into a yarn, we then wove it into a fabric to make some underpants. They're gonna to have to unpick all of all those man-made activities to get at the glucose yes. that that polymerized chemistry, that cellulose fiber is made of, right down at the microscopic level of those pants. You're but, making me tingle. So October the what? October the 7th, World Cotton Day. Dig them up on December the? 3rd, so you can tell the world on December the 5th, World Soils Day. Ollie, how can people find out more and where can they upload their results? So we have resources on the UNE Discovery Channel, which include other soil investigation type responses. Really good for school children to look at those. Yep. Uh, we also have resources on the Cotton Info web pages, yep. which is a cotton body that I work with quite often. And on Cotton Info, if you have sold a pair of undies, if you've got a picture of them when you dug them back up, you can tell us about your pants and you can share that image on our map with the rest of Australia. We've got some incredible soils in Australia. Wouldn't it be wonderful to link that incredible microbiological activity through to those incredible soils just by getting some more people to soil some undies? Good on you, Ollie. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Guys, if you want to find out more about this, there is a link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and like to the video. It really does help the channel. There's plenty more on timthompson.ag. Ollie, it's been fantastic spending time with you soiling your undies. Thank you, Tim. Pleasure.